Hello everyone, this is Laura from Discovery Fabric Patterns and today I'm going to show you a little bit about how you can bind your saddle skirt with your domestic machine at home. You can also get continuous binding. So this is a shiny lycra binding. There are also some more matte knit colors available and it comes in continuous yardage so you don't have to worry about joining strips. If I line it up with the edge of my fabric right sides together, stitch it about 3 8 of an inch, wrap my binding piece around to the back side, I can then stitch it down and I'll have this nice clean bound edge and I can do that the whole way around the outside of my piece with one continuous yardage piece. Or if I prefer I can cut strips. Cutting strips you can use any lightweight knit fabric and cut it into inch and a half wide strips. So here I've cut it with a grid ruler and a rotary cutter. You can always measure your inch and a half from either end of your fabric piece, mark it with chalk and cut it with scissors. That works fine too. Using cut strips is a great way to do a little bit of stash busting and it also opens up a whole world of colors, prints and patterns for the edge of your saddle skirt. If I am using cut strips for my binding, I'm going to have to join my strips together. I find the best way to do this is to create an angled join. You want to do that by putting them right sides together at a 90 degree angle to one another forming this nice square corner and then I stitch from this point to this point in a diagonal line across the square where they overlap. Then when I open my seam out, you'll see that they join together on this nice angle. I do that because it creates less bulk. Here in this example I have sewn them together with a straight seam and you can see when I bring this binding piece around the back those seam allowances are all stacking one on top of the other and this can create quite a bulge. If you're using a slightly heavier fabric for your binding you may also find that your machine will fight you. It may not want to go through that many layers of fabric all at once. So I find all in all it works a little better for me if I join my strips on an angle. You can see the difference here where I've joined them on an angle. When I bring that binding around to the back, my seam allowances are spread over a much greater distance. So they start way over on the right there and they go all the way over to there. So that spreads those seam allowances over nearly two inches of distance and allows my binding to sit a lot flatter. Whether I'm using continuous manufactured binding or cut strips, when I mount it to my fabric I want to make sure I leave a tail that is longer than my strip is wide. So I've used the other end of my strip here to measure out how long of a tail I will need. In this case an inch and a half because my strips are an inch and a half wide. And I've mounted the binding strip to the edge of my saddle skirt fabric right sides together. And when I pop it into the machine here I'm going to leave a seam allowance of three eighths of an inch. I want to be under half an inch of seam allowance because I want to make sure that I have enough width in my binding strip to wrap all the way around the back of the fabric and cover up this seam that I am putting in right now. And here I can stitch it down with a simple straight stitch because I'm really not worried about stretch for this garment. When I come back around to this point where I started, there's my pin making sure I had enough tail. I want to sew my binding strip on right up until it meets the point where I start it. So I want my final stitch attaching this binding strip to finish exactly where my first stitch on this started. So I will actually hold that tail out of the way because I want to make sure that I don't stitch my two tails together yet. And then I'm going to use the pin to mark exactly where that stitching line starts and come up to it slowly and then I actually hand dial my last stitch down and then back stitch to be sure that those two ends of that continuous stitching line meet where you've put your binding on all the way around. And now you can see I have two tails, both of them are longer than an inch and a half and my stitching comes right up to meet.
that point where the stitching meets is where I'm going to want to start basting my pieces together. I have them right sides together and I have them turned on a 90 degree angle to one another. And the square where they overlap, I want to stitch corner to corner with a loose basting stitch, just a few sloppy stitches to hold it in place from that point where those two seams meet to the opposite corner if my binding strips are at a 90 degree angle to each other. Now some people will pin this or clip it and that's fine too or some people will just hold it in place. Uh, I like to baste it because I can leave the basting stitches in while I sew my seam and I find that it doesn't move around on me as much. So for the few seconds it takes to throw in the basting stitch, I just throw in a quick basting stitch. It also allows me to check the seam placement on this final finish so I can open it out like that and before I've done any machine stitching or trimming or anything I can just double check. Then I can run it through the machine, remove that basting stitch, trim off my excess, clip my corners, and with my seam all cleaned up, I can open up my seam allowance, wrap that binding strip around the edge of my soft shell fabric there, and then I'll stitch from the top side down to secure that back there in place. In this case, because I'm not worried about stretch, I can use a straight stitch. I have it set to a straight stitch at about two and a half. I can use any of these regular stitches or I can use a stretch stitch. So I turn my machine to its little SS stretch stitch setting and that gives me access to all the stitches you see in the pictures in blue. So if I set it to a stretch stitch D here, that will give me this stitch. Your machine may be different, but you can always look up your manual online. Here's an example of stitching in the ditch. Here's an example of an edge stitch. Here is that stretch stitch D that I was showing you, which as you can see is wider. So if you're concerned about catching the back edge of your binding fabric, using a wider stitch can be a nice way to make sure you do. Here's another stretch stitch option that my standard machine has. Here it is with a wide zigzag, and here it is with a narrow zigzag. Really, the choice is yours.